Let's take a moment to remember 2014. Very long time ago now. So we're talking seven years ago, and this camera came out. It was the Samsung NX1. And still to this day, this camera teaches everyone about something. Be it the ease of which you can shoot with it, or the beautiful image coming out of it, or the firmware updates that came out, and the glass, the 16 to 50 mil f2 to 2.8. And it was fantastic for the time. I remember the Sony guys at Photokino when this came out. They were bricking themselves. But anyway, what exactly is so good about this camera? Now here we have the EOS R6. Now say you're a hybrid shooter who wants to uh, use stills and video at the same time in the same moment. Now to change between the two modes on this camera is as simple as literally pressing a button once. Bang, you're in video mode. On this camera, the all singing, all dancing 2600 pound EOS R6, it's a case of going from whatever stills mode you're in, say aperture priority mode, which is quite a commonly used mode for stills, through one, two, three, four, five, six places on the mode dial and now you're in video mode but oh no you haven't got aperture priority mode anymore in video mode so why you remember the 7d don't you from even further back in time than this it just had a little nice little lever like flick flick stills video Carried over your exposure settings, you didn't need to redo the exposure completely. You just reeled off the shot. Perfect. History lesson. Out of the belly of Christopher's ship, a mob burst, running in all directions, pulling furs off animals, shooting buffalo. Shooting each other, left and right. Father Meanwell waves his makeshift wand, forgives saucer-eyed Indians. Red-coated knights gallop across the prairie to get their men and to build a new world. Pioneers and traders bring gifts, smallpox, seagrams, and rice krispies. Civilization has reached the promised land. Between the snap, crackle, pop of smokestacks and multi-colored rivers swelling with flower-powered seed, are farmers sowing skulls and bones, and miners pulling from gaping holes green paper faces of a smiling English lady. The colossi in which they trust, while burying breathing forest and fields beneath concrete and steel, stand shaking fists, waiting to mutilate whole civilizations ten generations at a blow. Granted, in a controlled set with David Lynch behind the camera and a video tent, you won't be shooting stills and video on the same camera. But a lot of people like to do that, myself included. Because if I'm on the street doing a mood piece, for instance, and something magical happens, I want to be immediately in position to capture it. And if I happen to be in stills mode, I want it to be instantaneous to get into video mode. So that's the first lesson of the Samsung. Samsung, who make toasters, tanks and microwaves, have outsmarted Canon and Nikon, who've been in the camera business for many, many decades. How did this happen? Now, I once bumped into the Sigma CEO at IBC, uh, Kazuto. He was at the show with no entourage, and he was politely just um, taking in the stall at the Sigma stand, and people would come up to him and say hello. So I decided to say hello as well, and I had this with me, the Samsung NX1. 
and he, he let slip that the product manager came over from Samsung to work on the Sigma FP. So Samsung had some genuinely talented people designing and working on this camera. The Nikon inspired um, mode dial here has always fascinated me. It's so Nikon and it's got a drive mode that changes position on a rotational dial. Then you've got AF ISO white balance metering just like you have on say Nikon D850 on the shoulder there. The mode dial here uh, it doesn't have a video mode on it because obviously they've made that easy. Just one click of the D-pad or a custom button and you're in video mode. Or just press record. Now there was no cropping. The whole sensor readout was used in 4K which meant a 7K 28 megapixel wide image was being read out at 24 to 30 frames a second and H.265, which back in 2014, 2015, was simply unheard of, even on smartphones. So the processing power that they put into this camera, along with the Super AMOLED screen on the back, way ahead of the whole uh, camera industry at that time. So what else does it get right? The beautiful little top LCD display, which lights up orange, is really well laid out, really detailed, and shows you everything that you need to know. The grip is fantastic, especially if you've got big hands. Everything is immediately accessible without you having to do finger gymnastics to get to where you need to be. I'm constantly on this camera having to move my finger way back too far to get to the video record button. And I know you can assign it to the MFN button, multi-function button and um, but yeah why did they put the video mode button so far back here it's directly under your finger and you don't have to dislocate it to get to it which I find is useful the dials feel pretty nice the on off switch is very very responsive and the camera turns on so quickly that you barely notice you've had it off only one card slot. What were they thinking in 2014? How dare they? Only one card slot. I once compared the NX1 to the Canon C300, which everyone went wild for. They rented it, they used it for their best work, commercials, narrative, feature films, everything. This image was way more cinematic in every way. The, the C300's image was the most overrated of all time. Even when it came out, people were going, is that it? 8-bit 1080, really compressed. And when the digital bolets came out, it was like a response to that kind of thinking. Like, um, So you're going to get this job done in dead quick. You want small files, let's get it out there. Let's have a quick turnaround. The bank, the client will be happy with that. They don't care. They don't know what an image is. Digital Bolex was a complete sort of artist's camera compared to the C300, the darling of Cinema 5D. Boring fucking camera. This, for a fraction of the cost, was way more cinematic.
just better colour, or at least as good as Canon's colour, which is never a weak point, but far better resolution, far more cinematic in every way. And it shot stills at 15 frames a second, which was pretty much on par with the 1DX, the $6,000 professional camera for sports photographers back when this was released. Um, the only competitor really was the GH4, um, but this was kind of, it was cleaner, better colour below ISO 800. The only weakness really was that it, um, oh, not to mention the autofocus was phase detect. So like dual pixel AF, it was pretty good at focusing. But the only weakness really was the high ISO performance. Once you got above 1600, it did start to fall off a cliff. 800 was cleaner than the GH4, but 1600, 3200, mm, it couldn't quite hack it. Um, but it was a 28 megapixel APS-C sensor. So if Samsung ever made a low light champion camera full frame sensor, that would have been spectacular. And I would have loved to have used it. It's such a tragedy that they decided to leave the camera market and that people like Canon wore out in the end. Yeah, I hope one day, I really hope that they'll be back. The S lenses, really, really superb stuff. Really good optical image stabilization. Great range, great apertures, great sharpness. Great build quality, weather sealing, just way better than what Fuji were doing with their first mirrorless cameras. And this was Samsung's first enthusiast camera really first semi-professional effort because before that it was all sort of consumer junk that you'd find discounted in the bin and this was really one aimed at photographers why did you not buy it so yeah that that's the nx1 i think um i'll look at the back of these cameras in comparison the beautiful screen on that the slightly fiddly YouTubers flippy screen on this and um, I just think in so many years for so much extra money we've not come far in usability have we? We've not got far beyond three inches screen size. It's kind of disappointing and I think if Canon and Nikon really uh, are going to step it up they need to break out of the mould that they've been doing for years and years and years and just think outside the box a little bit. If Samsung can make a camera of this quality in 2014, which still stands up today so well, even with the image in video mode and the stills and the dynamic range and the RAW files superb, and surely for 2,600, 3,000, 4,000, 6,000, for whatever the R3 will cost, surely they can do better than what they are doing at the moment. Time has gone forwards. One quite cute thing, so when you press the buttons on the back, they sound like pool balls hitting each other, like snooker balls. I, I just, I like that for some reason. <laughs>